So genius is a label, a shortcut that signifies the remarkable achievements and abilities of an individual. But the habits of a genius are already baked into our daily routines. Geniuses are exceptional at failing, learning from mistakes, and cross-pollinating insights from various domains. They're working not for money or fame, but because they are compelled to pursue a particular craft or interest. They're compelled to solve the problem, paint on the canvas, or breathe life into an idea. Perhaps Mozart got it right when he said, neither a lofty degree of intelligence, nor imagination, nor both together go to the making of genius. Love, 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 that is the soul of genius. So today we have Justin Jewett. So when you get an email from Justin, you read it a couple times. <laughs> they're all, they are always very elegantly written. They're re they read like hilarious little screenplays and they usually have a self-deprecating moment in them. I don't know him very well, but I do know he is a study of contradictions. As Vice President and Director of Technology at Buck Wild Digital Agency, who is representing today. He is a suit, but he makes toys in his free time. He is both a natural facilitator, but he loves to push people's buttons. He is pretty self-conscious, but he enjoys being vulnerable and makes a point of doing that. He'll say he's not a genius, but the way his brain works is kind of genius. So please join me in welcoming Justin Jewett. Thank you. Do you need to touch anything on me? Yeah, yeah, thank you. Hi. Uh, I was telling my guys here uh, and gals, usually when I do this, there's a bunch of money involved. Uh, and weirdly, that's easier. Um, and also, my parents are here, so. Uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, there was this man who lived by the river. Uh, here at a radio report that the river was going to flood. Uh, and that he should evacuate his home. Uh, the man said, I'm religious. I pray. God will save me. He loves me. The waters rose up. man in a rowboat came along and he shouted, Hey, you in there. The town's flooding. Let me take you to safety. The man said, I got it. I pray. I'm religious. God loves me. God will save me. Helicopter comes by. Guy shouts down, You down there. The town is flooding. Let me drop a ladder down and take you to safety. Guy said, I'm religious. I got it. I prayed. God loves me. God is going to save me. He drowned. And at the gates of St. Peter, he demanded an audience with God. He said, Lord, I'm a religious man. I prayed to you. you I thought you loved me. God said, I sent you a radio report, a guy in a rowboat, and a guy in a helicopter. What the hell are you doing here? So, um, my name is Justin Jewett. I am 40 years old. Uh, I work at Buck Wild. Um, we do marketing there, which is cute. Um, <laughs> depending on how you look at it, uh, what I do there is either, I'm either a wolf in sheep's clothing or a sheep in wolf's clothing. I'm not sure, but um, a lot of what I do there has to do with just talking to groups of folks. Sometimes I'm selling to them. Sometimes I'm explaining things to them. Um, I always remark to my team that, you know, the work itself is pretty incidental. I could, I could be selling pancake batter or pancake batter machines. Um, uh, it's really just the way that I hear problems and try to fix them. Um, the thing that I feel passionately about with regards to my career uh, is working with my team and understanding who's the right fit for the right job uh, and putting them in the right place. Um, I have a son. Uh, he's going on seven years old. He's the love of my life. Um, but it's clear to me, it has become clear to me that I can't put all of my energy into him. I can't make him me and I can't make me him. Um, when he was born, I started to realize I need to find something to do with my time, with my energy and my life, so that he can be his own person. Um, I am admittedly, everyone who knows me will smile, uh, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty dark star. Um, I'm, I'm a pretty existential person, um, but it's kind of my job to not be a nihilist about it and really just try to find some icing 
on this cake that we all have to deal with. Um, again, about fatherhood, a fun fact, you cannot be a loving father and a nihilist at the same time. Uh, and it's weird that you don't just come out of the gate knowing that. You have to learn that. And this shit is me learning that. So I have thought, I did not check the time when I started. Um, I have thought a lot about how to justify talking to you on this subject of genius. Um, I do not consider myself to be a genius. I, I, feel, I feel kind of like a raccoon talking to dogs about how to be cats um, with regards to that. Uh, it, it just it doesn't make a ton of sense, but clearly uh, I'm on some kind of wave. I do what I do, and many people, not everyone, but many people find it to be strange and, and interesting or curious or whatever. Um, so there's something going on, uh, and um, you know, my goal here is just to sort of talk about that, talk about what compels me to do that, um, and maybe there will be some ray of light that shines through, some different perspective. Pretty much since my son was born, um, I've started, I, to be honest with you, I think it's coincidental that he was born and I started this, but maybe not, but um, since he was born, I have been creating little zines and booklets. You had one on your chair when you got here this morning. Um, pins, patches, toys. Um, over the past five or six years, I've made dozens and dozens, maybe even hundreds at this point, uh, little projects um, that I do, I do sell um, on my website, but that's really just a byproduct of making the thing. It's, it's really, for me, about... Um, seeing if I can do something, going through that process, learning what did I do wrong, what do I wish I would have done uh, better, how could I maybe do it different next time. Um, in, the, uh, in the cases of like patches and pins and those types of things, another kind of note there, hi, uh, another note there um, where that started was, you know, you can't, uh, I spent a lot of time in my life dealing with like my body um, and being an overweight guy and being a big person, having to go into stores and shit and like check for the biggest size right away. And one thing that getting into patches and just stuff that you can slap on your jacket is that you can't, you can't grow out of that. Um, it will always fit. And that was an important part of my creative process. Um, I still come at it from that angle now, uh, and I, I'm holding on to that. It, it, I'm pissed about it, and, uh, and it makes it better. Um, uh, through all of it, however, um, somehow, um, both from a mixture of trying and not trying, it, it, one could say that it all fits. It all looks like my shit, um, and I like that. I don't want to try too hard at that. I don't want to force you know, a peg of some unknowable shape into a hole of some other shape. Um, but right now it feels really great and I'm having, I'm having fun. And I'm proud. So that's a little bit about me. Um, thinking about genius as a construct, um, as an idea that we all use. The, the setup for it being a shorthand word I think is very uh, it's a very good way of, of thinking about it. But really before, you know, before the challenge of talking about it in this way, I had never really put any thought against it um, or, or any context around it. Um, I think that genius is really about some unexplainable force, some, some unknowable um, trailhead that pushes you to, to do something or to think about something. Um, it maybe comes from without, it maybe comes from within, I'm not too sure. Um, another word easily could be inspiration. Um, but either way, it, it pushes you, you know, and, and you're either compelled to, to, to listen or, or not. Uh, I particularly don't think that the Mozart, Newton, Einstein, genius archetype is particularly useful uh, only because maybe with the exception of those people, um, 
it's, it's relative, you know, uh, you can be a genius in math and, and not a genius in words. You can, um, <laughs> this ridiculous metaphor on my notes here, uh, you can really be a genius, you can really be awesome at thinking about squares, but you can be just a total circle idiot. Um, and there's going to be out there circle people um, who are also blind to squares. And sometimes you'll find someone who can do both. Um, but who is really to say which is a genius uh, and which isn't? I think that part of that, part of the, the nitty gritty of what that genius is really comes down to um, perspective. And maybe that can be a learned perspective, but maybe that's just something that um, is inside of you, you know. That square person, part of his or her genius may be that he thinks about squares in a very triangles sort of way. And it's probable, if we look back in history or just in the context of our lives, that you know, maybe, maybe that person was the first person to think about it in that way. Maybe it's incredibly brilliant and incredibly simple and clear to see now that that's been done, but they got there first, they put it out into the world, uh, and they made themselves vulnerable to maybe something that came back to them. Um, that's great, but the fact that that person was sitting around thinking about circles at all, in any perspective, is also part of it. Something pushed them, something was under their skin, they had a bee up their nose about circles, and they decided to sit in a room, or sit at a pad, or bang their head against the wall, and really ponder this thing that nobody else maybe was thinking about. Um, I don't think that this genius thing or this inspiration thing or whatever is, is a novel thing that, that leaves you alone. I think that if you get swept up in it, and who's to say if you do, but if you get swept up in it, um, you belong to it for that time. Um, I think you can choose to stay belonging to it or to opt out of it, but um, if it's got you, it's got you. Um, and Again, the people here that are from my life, um, it's not easy to be around. If somebody is burning up inside about fucking circles, just go away or shut up or like <laughs> the sun's down. Um, and that's a thing. You know, that doesn't have to be bad, um, but it's important to recognize and know that this is what's going on with me. Here I am. Um, and I think probably, at least for me, it's important to know about yourself. This is what's going on with me. Here I am. I'm going to beat myself up about this thing until I either decide to give up or I get somewhere or I'm on to ovals now or whatever. Um, and that is another thing. There, there's no end to it. There's always some place to go. You solve squares, I mean, with the shapes, I know. But, you know, <laughs> you just keep going. Um, there's this guy I was reading about, um, again, totally incidentally, but this guy, Claude Shannon, um, who is the father of information systems. He, uh, he invented the bit, as in like bits and bytes and kilobytes and megabytes. He really was this person, you know, this most important person you never heard of type of thing. And in a speech in 1952 um, to his colleagues at Bell Labs, uh, he mentioned totally offhand that Isaac Newton at the age of 25, had produced enough science, physics, and mathematics to make 10 to 20 people famous. Um, I was less impressed with Newton and than I was with Shannon for thinking about it in those terms. This idea that someone can be so prolific that they're creating seeds that can go then be planted by other people and taken to those extremes, um, that really resonated me, with me and it felt, it felt like a genius way to think about being a genius which I was into. Um, so that is my thoughts about genius as a construct. Um, but I'm standing here. The construct is not. And so what's my perspective? Um, I don't think that my creative urges, my creative impulses, um, I don't think I was born the way that I am today. I think at one point or another, I. I started to think about thinking about things. Um, and I, I became addicted to that. At some point, I caught this meta bug, um, and, and it 
it sort of folded in on itself and became something else. It, it, I lost control of it. Uh, and, you know, not in any sort of like ugly way, but just in a very matter of fact way, there's a dependency to that. Like, I'm in my head. I'm, I'm, I'm fucking trapped in here. Um, and at some point, that led to a compulsion to making stuff about thinking about stuff. Um, that felt and that feels like a way to, to scratch the itch, to almost relieve the pain, um, to soothe and express and like exhaust some of this, some of these knots, some of all this noise out of my head. Um, I am not a patient person. I am not a perfectionist. Um, and again, personally, I've just decided to lean in. There's a lot of, there's a lot of language about this in this book that's on your chair, but I've decided to lean into that and, and really expect to generate bugs and flaws and fuck ups and typos in my work that I can hope to be fairly confident about turning into, into features, turning bugs into features. That's a core part of what I've decided to do with myself. Um, and the cool thing about expecting to fail is it's a win-win. You fail, I knew it. <laughs> you don't, great. Um, that is a wicked defensive way to go about the world, but we need defenses or else we wouldn't have a word for it. Um, I in no way want to turn all this stuff that I do into like a full-time gig. I do not really want to like grow it in any way past my own purview. The thesis is the same. I want to make stuff that I want. Um, I am my own audience. If I don't like it but everybody else does, it's shit. Um, if I like it and nobody else does, that's fine. Um, that also sounds defensive and maybe it is. Um, <laughs> but. Uh, but success in our sort of like classic easy way to grok is not, it does not feel essential to me continuing to do whatever it is that I'm doing. I want to make my toys, I want to make my zines, I want to write my language, and then I want to write the next one that's about this last one. Um, I just wrote a book about Grendel, uh, which is a book about Beowulf. Um, and had a hilariously fun time doing it. Um, it was dark as hell. Um, it took a long time, but the, the, the sort of, again, meta-functional aspects of it um, are really compelling to me, and I don't expect them to be compelling to anyone else. Um, whatever I'm doing, I started to do, again, because I was I was trapped in my head. I'm this person. I have this, I have this personality. Um, and certainly what I'm doing, this making shit, is a coping mechanism. Um, the waters of my life were rising. I was addicted to thinking, and I was trapped there. I was drowning. But instead of waiting for a ball of light to come down and save me, I cut a pair of gills. I decided to figure out how to be down here. I picked up a pencil and I started writing haikus. I folded and stapled and cut and made and thought. I gave my ideas room to breathe and then I fed them fuel when they started to catch. Incidentally, I'm on fire now and not drowning anymore. But that's something that I did. Um, I primed that pump and I decided instead of rolling down path A, I'm going to climb up path B. And I feel good about it. I don't feel good about a lot of shit. And I feel good. I feel proud and it matters to me that some whisper, some moment ago, has now become this thing that I can claim as a part of my identity. So in conclusion, does it say conclusion up there? I think so. Um, so to tie that up, 
in thinking about genius, in thinking about inspiration, or whatever the word is, obviously the word doesn't matter. If that, if that isn't clear, I, I, don't, I don't think the word is, is anything great. Um, but whatever that drive is, whatever that, that spirit of making and chasing and feeding and feeling and listening and going and, and just this feedback loop that one creates, I, I don't think there's a barrier. I don't think there's a being a genius or waiting for genius to happen. I, I do think that, that it's just about getting to work uh, and seeing what happens and then a key part of it is figuring out what to do about whatever that thing that happens is. Again, it's a chase. It's, it's a cycle. It goes on and on. If it ends or if at some point you're done or it feels easy or automatic or you're in your groove, personally, I don't think that's a bad thing, but it's not, that's not the shit that I'm talking about. That's, that, maybe that's work. I want to get easier and like have my career be the thing, but I don't want this to ever be easy. I do think, I do think that it has to hurt in order to feel compelling in order to feel fulfilling. But the idea is that doing it hurts less on the macro um, than not doing it, which weirdly hurts more on the micro, uh, if you can dig that. My kind of advice or my point of view to sort of inject, you know, whatever that is, is, is what works for me is be your own audience. Don't make stuff you know, if, if, you, if you laser engrave Bible verses onto driftwood, then make sure you're into that shit. Um, because there's going to be a lot of people that walk by. You know, and if you're not happy about it, then there might be more angst involved with that than, than if you were doing something otherwise that you found to be good, that you found to settle yourself, to calm yourself at night. Um, it should, either, it should either keep you up all night or put you to sleep and sleep like a baby. Like there, there's something to doing what you love and doing what you need to do um, that should either fire you up or calm you down. Uh, expect to fail. If you're, not, if you're not fucking up, if you're not frustrated, if, if you're not angry at yourself frequently, then it's, you know, you're probably making it too easy. Um, and so then expect to improvise. Take those failures. Take those bugs and turn them into features. They're going to be shocking and surprising and not the thing. You're going to think that you had red and blue and yellow and god damn it, it's brown now. And okay, what do, what do I do with brown? How am I going to do whatever it is that I feel that I need to do with what I have created? This, this mess that I've made. Clean it up. Again, my point of view is that... If everybody understands what you're doing, question, is that really what you want to be doing? If everybody gets it, is it you? Or are you making the thing that you think everybody's going to get? That's a nice filter for me. Um, this book that you have is full of all those nice filters. Um, those are things that I've sort of learned and created and grown and, and, and etched into my mind for just how to pressure check the stuff that I'm doing. And I'm <laughs> terribly nervous that you have it. Um, but it felt, it felt like the right thing to do.